All right, time to have another fit formulation practice today. Actually, I was thinking to make some videos, some tutorial videos, and show you how to use some fit formulation software, such as WUFDA or CFC5 to formulate the fit. But I thought, okay, if as a nutritionist, I don't have access to a feed formulation software, what should I do? Should I give up? Should I formulate the feed manually? Yeah, it's possible. But you know, if you're gonna formulate the diet manually, it would take time. But if we use our creativity, we can just use Excel spreadsheet to make our own feed formulation spreadsheet. It's easy. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use uh, Excel spreadsheet to balance a diet based on least cost feed formulation. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to use uh, nonlinear programming models to formulate the feed based on uh, maximum profit feed formulation. So let's get it started. So I'm gonna just share my screen and fire up the Excel sheet. Okay. So first of all, we need to have solver function in the data menu to optimize the diet. Actually, we use the solver function for optimization practice, but originally it's not activated here and you need to activate it. Although I have made uh, another video on how to activate solver function in Excel. In this video, I'm gonna show you again. To activate the solver function, you need to click on file and then click on options and then just click on add-ins and then click on go and check the solver add-in box and click on OK. So if we take a look at the data section, we can see solver function has been activated over here. And we will use this to formulate the feed based on either uh, least cost feed formulation or maximum profit feed formulation. Okay, so actually uh, to formulate a diet, we need to have information on ingredients price and ingredients nutrient composition. And we need to know the nutrient requirements of the animal. And then we will combine those ingredients in such a way to meet the nutrient requirements. So I'm gonna start off with importing uh, ingredients information. So you can just use the first row as headings for the ingredient information. Previously, I have imported the feed ingredients list here just to save the time in this video. So it's a simple diet. You can see you can put items like corn, different uh, ingredients, corn, wheat, 
wheat middlings, soybean oil, canola, soybean meal. So as you can see in each diet, we need to have energy feed, protein feed, and additives. So here, corn, wheat, wheat middlings, and soybean oil and canola are the energy ingredients. Soybean meal and fish meal is pro are protein ingredients. So I've got oyster shell meal and limestone as sources of calcium. And I have dicalcium phosphate as a a source of calcium and phosphorus. I've got sodium bicarbonate or soda as a source of sodium. And I've got salt as a source of sodium and chloride. Actually, I will make, I will make more videos on nutritional management in animal nutrition and I'll try to explain every single trick and art that we can use in feed formulation. But I'm gonna take this opportunity to introduce one of those tricks. So I have seen in most of the diets all around the world, people use salt as a source of sodium and chloride. But the idea is, as you can see here, salt has 39% sodium and 60% chloride. It means that its chloride is way higher than its sodium. And on the other hand, the requirement of sodium and chloride are same. Both are from 0.16 to 0.23% in the diet. The requirement of sodium and chloride. Okay, if you're gonna add salt to balance the sodium requirement, as you can see, this ingredient has more chloride than the sodium. Then your dietary chloride will go up and it means that your diet will have more negative charge. It means chloride. And it can cause several problems, skeletal problems and uh, leg problems in poultry. That's why I strongly recommend using sodium bicarbonate that has only sodium as a source of sodium and use the salt to balance the sodium and chloride. It's really important. Some people think, okay, sodium bicarbonate is used in um, under the heat heat stress uh, conditions but the reality is under normal situation also you need to use sodium bicarbonate and it's really important okay then i've got uh, synthetic amino acids uh, additives, for example, lysine, DL-methionine, which is used to balance the methionine and methionine plus cysteine in the diet. And I've got threonine, and I've got vitamin and, pre and uh, mineral premixes. Okay, so these are my ingredients that I'm going to use in this practice. So the next step, actually, if you want to make it fancier, 
you can just select your ingredients and then on the home tab you need to click on format as table and you can make a table to to actually make it fancier and i'm gonna check my table has headers there we go okay now you can see uh, i've got my feed stuff in blue color and every other um, nutrient composition are in the below or even I can change it to actually other format yeah I think this looks better because you can see every other row has different colors and I think it's more easier to go through the data in this section okay so this is my ingredient tables what else do i need then actually i need to put ingredients constraints because i'm gonna um, give minimum and maximum value for each feed, feed stuff, because it's important. We need to pay attention to anti-nutrient uh, in the feed stuff and also uh, feed stuff's price. And both of them are limitation, limiting factors. So based on uh, the presence of anti-nutrient in a feed stuff and also based on the feed stuff cost, we need to determine the amount of its usage in the diet. So because I'm gonna separate it from my table and I don't want to um, attach it to the table, I'm just gonna copy this cell actually cut it and paste it over here okay now i need to have minimum amount based on percentage and maximum amount again based on percentage and here actually will be my inputs so i'm gonna just choose this one this color from here from style to make it more fancier and easier to detect and work on that okay so because actually it is based on percentage so i'm gonna choose these cells and put it as a percentage style and I'm gonna add two decimals. It means if I, for example, let's say soybean oil can be used uh, maximum 5%. If I put 5%, you can see 5.00. It means uh, I put it as percentage and I change the format from here, okay. So to make it easier, I'm gonna put um, zero for all the minimum values and 100 for um, all the maximum values. But as I said, I can change them whenever I want during my feed formulation. So for the vitamin premix and mineral premix, actually we are using them 
as in a fixed uh, value, in a fixed amount, and it is 0.25%. It means two and a half kilo per ton of the feed. So I'm gonna put minimum and maximum value, same for vitamin and mineral premix. Okay, so then I would have ingredients inclusion in my diet. It means the final uh, formula. So I'm gonna just, okay, adjust the cell size. Now it's better. So over here, I will have my final feed formulation. So I'm gonna format it same as here. It means that, for example, if corn is 60%, you can see it will be shown as 60% in the diet. Okay. Okay, it's the first section of feed formulation. It means that we need to know our ingredients, nutrient composition, and also their cost. And we need to specify minimum or maximum values that they can be used in the diet. Okay, the second step, as I said, is uh, specifying the nutrient requirements. Okay, so I'm gonna move my video over here. Okay. Now I'm going to put nutrient constraint over here. And I will have minimum and maximum value. Okay, and I'm gonna just merge these two cells. Yeah, it looks better. And to separate it from the ingredient table, I'm gonna format it in a different color. So, actually, I can just Um, I'm trying to actually separate this section. Okay, this one, I'm gonna format it as different color. Okay, there we go. And I don't need these extra columns and I'm gonna get rid of them. Okay, so I can actually change the color here. Okay, so now I can see I have specified this color for the nutrient uh, requirements section. Okay. Then I need to have diet specification. Okay, before actually writing the diet specification, let's just uh, import the nutrient requirements over here. Actually, I'm gonna use uh, RAS 308 nutrient requirements and to formulate a feed. And I'm gonna use the 
uh, grower phase nutrient requirements. So as you can see, Ross 308 broiler chickens need um, 3,100 kilocalorie per kilogram energy, metabolizable energy. I can import it as 3.1 because I'm going to change the unit to megacalorie per uh, kilogram. So, and it's not the fixed amount. I think in my previous video, I talked about uh, fluctuation in nutrient requirements. And I told you that nutrient requirements are in a range, not a fixed amount. So based on my experience, I would say for a grower phase, I can accept 2.9 uh, megacalorie per kilogram uh, dietary energy as well. So as you can see, I put 2.9 and as a minimum value for energy and 3 to 1 for maximum value. Actually, I think, yeah, this is the weight of the diet. So to make it easier, I'm going to um, go to view and freeze the first column. Okay, now if I move over here, you can see the first column is here and I can see that to make it easier, okay, to work on that. Okay, I'm gonna put them as ME or metabolizable energy nutrient requirements. The next nutrient is protein. If I look up at protein um, requirements, it is 21.5% for the grower section. I'm gonna put it 21.5 and for the minimum value I can choose um, 20 percent. So the next uh, nutrient I got here actually it's mineral. It's calcium. So calcium requirement is 0 0.87. I'm gonna put 0 0.87 and for phosphorus I've got 0 0.435. 0 0.435. For the sodium and chloride, usually the range is between 0 0.16 to 0 0.23. I can put 0 0.17 for both of them. For the lysine, I've got um, 1.29. As you can see here, for amino acids requirements, there is actually um, two columns, total and digestible. For sure, using the digestible section is better, um, but I will talk about that in my next videos, and I will explain that, especially when we are using byproducts, uh, for example, um, poultry byproducts in the diet. In that case, we need to use digestible amino acids. But if you, if your ingredients, you know, are normal ingredients like corn, wheat, uh, and in that, in in this case, you don't have to use digestible amino acids. But if you do, there is no problem. So. Lysine requirement is 1.29, and I'm gonna import it here. For the next one is methionine. For methionine, I've got 0 0.51, 0 0.51, and for the methionine plus cysteine, 
um, I've got 0 0.99. For theronine, I've got 0 0.88. And for the tryptophan, I've got 0 0.21. There we go. So now I have completed the nutrient constraints, but one thing remains, and it is the weight of the diet. As you can see, I have put one for all ingredients, and here, I'm gonna put one, it means that my diet has to be formulated in 100%. Okay, the next step is diet specification. In diet specification, I can actually Again, format it mm, because we shouldn't uh, touch this part. I mean, I'm going to put formula and for the formula section, you shouldn't touch the formula section again because uh, the software is gonna calculate those numbers. That's why I am going to choose warning text text okay and i have actually okay formatted as warning text in red color to show that we shouldn't touch there okay so this column was uh, redundant and i'm gonna get rid of that okay so now i'm gonna put formula and calculate my diet specification. If you are not savvy in Excel, that's totally fine because I'm gonna use a simple formula here and it is some product. To insert a formula, first you need to put equal sign. When you put equal sign, it shows that you are going to use formula in this set. So over here, I'm gonna write some product. Actually, it popped up and I'm gonna just, oops, yeah. Yeah, some product. In some product, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all of these cells. I mean, the weight of each ingredient. And put comma. I'm gonna multiply it by the inclusion rate in the diet. Okay, because now these cells are zero, you can see that my cell here is zero. But just for test that, if I put one, you can see it is 0 0.01. And if I put it as 100%, just imagine I'm going to use 100% of my diet as core. It's not a good idea. I'm just testing my software. So if I put 100%, you can see the diet specification cell is one. So I can actually save it here for now to import the other cells as well. Okay, now I'm going to specify my dietary energy. So if I formulate my diet, I will see the dietary energy over here. So I'm gonna put again some product. You know, 
product means the product of a multiplication. And the sum means I'm going to add them up together. So when I'm saying some product, it means, for example, if I'm going to calculate the dietary energy, I'm going to multiply each ingredient inclusion in the diet by its energy value. And then I'm gonna add them up together to have my final uh, value for the dietary energy. It is the meaning of some product. So for energy, I'm gonna choose these cells, these row, I mean the energy one, and then I'm gonna put comma, and then I'm gonna choose the feed formula section or ingredient inclusion section. All right, and I can put parentheses, there we go. See, because I have put 100% of the diet as corn, just to test that, and the diet and the energy level of corn is 3.35 megacalorie per kilogram. So it shows that my final energy value is 3.35 megacalories. So I'm going to uh, actually repeat that for all of the ingredients in my diet. Okay, some product for protein section, I'm gonna choose is row, put comma, and then inclusion rate, and then I'm gonna close parentheses. Okay, for calcium section, again, I'm gonna put some product and choose the calcium values, put comma, and then choose inclusion rate and close the parentheses. And I'll do that for actually available phosphor section. As you know, some part of the phosphorus in plants has been bound by the phytate as anti-nutrients. And that part is not available for the monogastric animals. Not for ruminants, for ruminants it's available. But for monogastric animals, it's not available. And that's why we need to consider uh, free phosphorus or available phosphorus. I will make more videos on these stuff on nutritional management and I will try to explain everything, everything regarding the uh, precise nutritional management. Okay. I'm gonna choose inclusion rate, close parentheses. And so actually, if you want to be, to make it easier, the other trick I'm gonna show you is in this cell, because I don't want to spend time to, you know, choose every row separately. In this cell, if I, for example, in the first one, in, the, in this one. If I see the B22 up to R22 is same and fixed for all of my calculations in this column. So here, if I click between B and the number of cell or the number of row, I mean, 
22, and then I press F4, you can see it's gonna put double dollar sign around the uh, B. It means that this cell will be same and fixed for the uh, upcoming cells in the formula. And I'm gonna do same for this one, for R, there we go. Now, if I click here in this cell and uh, just put my cursor in the corner to see the plus sign, after that, I'm gonna just double click. And, or I can just drag it down, there we go. You can see uh, I filled up the formula for the next cells without spending and wasting my time for that. Okay, so now you can see this column, diet specification column, will show the amount of nutrients in um, my diet. And I need to specify the dietary cost as well, because we are going to use minimum price or least cost fit formulation. That's why I need to have um, my dietary cost as well. So I'm gonna choose costs and multiply it by the amount of each ingredient and add them up. See here, my corn price is 0.234 dollar per kilogram. I'm just pretending. So if I use 100% of my diet as corn, my dietary cost will be the price of corn. And it's the idea. So after this, uh, I'm gonna formulate it, that's it. So now I'm gonna click on data tab and click on solver. Okay, this part is the most important part in feed formulation because I'm gonna specify my feed formulation method. And my feed formulation method here is least cost feed formulation. In this window, I've got objective cell. It says set objective. What's my objective here? It is the dietary cost. I'm gonna minimize it. So I'm going to select this cell. It is U3 or dietary cost that I can see my dietary cost here. And what I'm going to do with objective cell, am I going to maximize it or minimize it? Minimize it because I want to have a diet with least cost uh, formulation. And I'm gonna minimize the cost of the diet. But in my next video that I will show you how to use Excel to formulate the diet based on maximum profit feed formulation. In that case, you will see I will put profit cell here as objective cell and I will choose maximize it because I want to maximize my profit. Okay, in this case, it is least cost feed formulation. So the next uh, tab is by changing variable cells. I'm going to formulate diet based on or by changing the values over here. It means I'm going to choose ingredient inclusion. As you can see, it is cell B22 up to cell R22. Okay, it means that I'm saying the, I'm telling the uh, software 
by changing the values in this row actually uh, meet the constraints. I will uh, specify the constraints here and formulate the diet. Okay, subject to constraint. I need to have some constraints in my feed formulation. I'm going to add, so cell reference. The first constraint is I need to have my inclusion rates less than less than or equal to the maximum amount that I have specified here. See, cell reference is actually P22 until R22. It means the formula, feed formulation, or my final um, formula, the inclusion rate of ingredients. And they need to be less than or equal the maximum amount that I have specified in row 20. So add the next constraint is my inclusion rates should be greater or equal. As you can see, I changed it to greater or equal. Then what's the constraint? Minimum. It means that they need to be um, higher than um, minimum amounts. So here I'm gonna actually, okay. I'm gonna change them a little bit because I've got 0.25% here for vitamin premix and mineral premix. And for some reason, I have seen that if we specify, because we want to uh, use vitamin premix and mineral premix exactly at 0.25%. If we put a constraint and say the reference cell should be equal, exactly equal to this cell, it will make it easier to formulate. So I'm gonna just change this because here I specified um, E22 to R22. I'm going to exclude mineral and vitamin premix for now. And yeah, that one, this row until here. And for this one, it should be less than or equal to this amount. As you can see, I have selected from corn until throning, and I, I have excluded vitamin and mineral premixes here. Okay, and for this one, actually, I'm gonna do same thing. Change it for reference cells. I'm gonna choose these cells and they should be greater than the minimum values. So as you can see, I have excluded the vitamin and premix. Now I'm going to specify uh, vitamin and premix equals to this number. See, Q22, this cell should be equal to uh, Q20. It means that I want the software to put the amount of vitamin premix exactly uh, equal to 0.25%. Uh, and I'm gonna add one more constraint and put the mineral uh, premix equal to um, 0.25. Okay, I have done from um, 
ingredients constraint. And now I'm going to uh, give constraints for diet specification. So now I'm going to choose the weight of the uh, diet that it is here. It should be equal to this one, nutrient constraint, I mean weight of the diet that I have specified one. It means that it, it needs to be formulated at 100%. Okay, so now is better. I'm just turned on my light here. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna add now I'm going to specify that these cells, I mean my dietary uh, nutrient concentrations and energy concentration should be greater or equal to the minimum values that I have specified over here. And my energy and protein section should be uh, less than or equal to the maximum amount that I have specified here. So now I have got uh, almost uh, all constraints here and you need to check this box, make unconstrained variables non-negative and then from the selecting, select a solving method, I'm gonna select simplex LP. LP means linear programming because for NLP one, nonlinear, we will use that in maximum profit fit formulation. If I click solve, okay. We need to pay attention to this message. It says solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Great job. If you get this message, it means you are error free and you got the final formula. But this is the computer. It doesn't know anything about ingredient limitations. It doesn't know anything about um, nutrient requirements of animals or different scenarios that we might uh, deal with in the real scenario. I mean, we need to double check the values that we got here. For example, for soybean oil, I can see I've got 4.96%, it's good. It's not higher than the maximum amount uh, of soybean oil. If I want to, for example, here, mm, decrease the, as you can see, for soybean meal and fish meal, both are zero. Why? Because the software has been trying to provide the dietary protein by using canola. And I don't want to do that. I want to restrict the amount of canola and use soybean meal and fish meal as well. So I'm gonna just put, um, let's say, 20% or even 15% for as a maximum value for canola. And then I'm gonna formulate it again. Solve. Okay, the message is good. As you can see, it decreased the amount of canola and it has added actually soybean meal and fish meal. Fish meal doesn't sound good to me. I'm gonna decrease its amount to let's say 3% and solve it again. 
again, the message is good. Solver found the solution. And you can see uh, the usage or inclusion rate of fish meal is 3% in my diet. And all other um, ingredients have been used in a good amount, in an acceptable amount. So by this, actually I have formulated a diet to minimize the dietary cost. Now, it's all, we finished. But if you want to make it user-friendly for printing stuff, you can just put something like um, final formula over here and you can put ingredients and their person inclusion percentage. I mean, it's an extra thing. You don't have to do that, but I'm doing this just to um, make it easier to read. So ingredients, I'm gonna say this cell should be equal to this cell. And this one should be equal to wheat. As you can see, I'm trying to copy them down to have them in um, vertical position rather than having them in horizontal position because it looks better. Okay, after limestone is calcium phosphate, after that is sodium bicarbonate, after that is salt equals um, lysine equals DL methionine equals threonine and equals vitamin premix and mineral premix. I think I've got all of them. So now inclusion is actually this cell for corn. And let me see if I can drag them down. Okay, no, I, I think I need to actually put the formula one by one. Okay, wheat middlings is this one and soybean oil is this value, canola is this one for soybean meal, I've got this one. For fish meal, I've got 3% over here. And oyster and limestone and um, dicalcium phosphate. And the other one is sodium bicarbonate. The other one is salt. The other one is lysine and DL methionine and threonine and vitamin premix and mineral premix. Okay, if I want to 
um, format them as table, I'm gonna uh, go to home tab and for format as table, let's say I'm gonna choose this one. My tables has my table has headers. Yes. Okay. See now, uh, if I formulate the diet, let's say I'm going to, for example, change it to 20% for now, and then formulate it again to see how it looks like. Okay. There you, go. you can see. My final formula is here. When I put it as a uh, vertical now and I format it as table, now I have a choice to sort it. Actually, for example, smallest to largest or sort them by largest. To I hope you enjoyed this video and you gained some experience about feed formulation and being independent. If you have in a situation that you don't have access to, um, you don't have access to uh, feed formulation software, you can use uh, Excel spreadsheet and just uh, formulate your diet. If you have any question, please let me know down there in the comments and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.